This bad boy has turned up this morning, so uh, I can crack on with the braces as and when I get the chance to do that. It's bin day on the farm, so it's got to get the gate open. With the excessively large chain. We're losing our waste bin. The uh, apparently local councils can't operate out of their area and we're on the border between two, two different counties. So because we're outside the county border, they're saying they can't take the waste anymore. And the county borders that we're within don't offer a similar service. So we're uh, really struggling to uh, find someone to get a replacement bin like this on our route. So I uh, wonder what everyone else does. Do you use skips or do you use a bin like this? Um, what, what's your waste solution? Give me some ideas. Fantastic grease gun this is. It's the best one, but it just weeps a little bit. Like you leave it overnight. And there's always a little bit wept out, I've just wiped it off, but pretty annoying. You'd think it'd have like a retraction mechanism like uh, like they do on a sealant gun. Uh, quiz question the other day, I asked what this thing was for. Um, I've never seen one before, but uh, it's for greasing, grease nipples that you can't get to, like in a, if you've got a universal joint, and uh, the grease nipple's poking out, but there's something sort of near it that you can't get the sort of heavy end of your grease gun on. Uh, this just pokes in, if I zoom in a bit. This just pushes the ball of the grease nipple in with the end of the point, and then you can put pressure on it and pump your grease gun, and it will actually grease the, uh, grease the fitting without having to click the, the heavy big end like this of a grease nipple over over the fitting. You can just, just literally poke it in the bearing. So it might be quite handy for anyone watching. I've never seen one before and would uh, definitely have been handy in the past. I have to take the uh, free flow return off this to release the U-jack. I've not started it up forgetting to put it back on, but I keep forgetting to put it on. And then remembering just before I uh, go to drive off, so slightly annoying. Need some sort of reminder. Come on, Ollie. Remember to do it for the first time ever. Oh, yes. He's done it. There's a sneaky little grease nipple in here for the DFS packer that, like, you'd never know was there. It's in, you can't see it. You have to sort of feel your way onto it. Well awkward. The worst thing about uh... Oh there we go. Just need that thin pipe to lodge in that gap at sort of this angle, which you'd never get a normal greaser on. These ends are incredible. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for these if uh, if you're doing any greasing. Definitely get yourself one of these, but make sure you get the genuine one. Like there's lots of imitations. The genuine one extends the the gripping feet out and it's narrower so that it can get on your nipple easy and sucks it in. Whereas a lot of the non-genuine ones are make it really awkward and these are also fatter. So a uh, really good bit of kit. Check the string boxes. I filled them up last night, to be fair, off the front box. So I only need uh, to fill the front box up. And uh, put one spool in here. Good. Wait for a call to say that the parts are in for the tractor, so back on the woodworking. Uh, gonna give this chain a sharp and <clears throat> don't know if you saw from yesterday's footage, but uh, 
that is not shaft. The old boy where I used to do my apprenticeship would say you could ride down that using your balls for brakes. So um, yeah, just got a chainsaw file, just like sharpening a chainsaw really. Um, put a slot it in the tooth and just one or two positive passes through. Even amount on each tooth. First time you file them, it's going to be tricky because it's just adapting to the file shape. Oh, is it at the start? Oh yes. I can't wait to see the difference in the cut quality. It's really hard to push into the into the oak before, so let's see what it's like. You can actually, it's, <laughs> it just self feeds now. There's um, there's no pressing down on it like that. It was really hard to force it into the wood before. And you can see in the shavings, like they're nice and sort of sharp edged. Whereas the stuff I did yesterday was like fuzzy and torn and ripped. See how it's like pulled the wood fibers out versus cut them. Sort of good a testament as anything. Uh, and you're not, you're not working the machine as hard, so it was, it was a good 10 minutes spent there. Now I know my mortises are gonna be 50 mil, and I've got my two saw blades. I don't want uh, exactly 50 mil between them. And there's probably a millimeter of kerf with the two blades from the tip to the body of the blade. So I want 51 mil of spacer. That's in the middle. I'll leave a link to this blade in the description. Slide that along. 
so the shoulder hits that line. Just uh, any inch, like there's going to be tiny bits depending on how far I put that first tenon into the box. I think we're probably going to go a little bit more than 80 and just take this bit off with a little chisel. Go another mill deeper, I think, actually. What do you reckon to that bad boy then? <laughs> there we go. She looks pretty stunning, to be honest. The easiest way to check will be to cut a piece of board square on the panel saw. Just hold it along the shoulders, but that's going to be a spot on. This one here, I'd cut the shoulders on before that saw blade turned up. I just ran it through the blades to get the tenon cut, but I, I set the, the cut back a few mil, so it left a little square of timber, so it didn't uh, release these edge pieces of throw them out the other side of the saw when they sort of dragged on it. So that was a safe way of doing it. But now I've um, got the blade, I can cut all the others before I do these shoulder cuts to the right depth and hopefully they should all fall off nice and easily when I cut the shoulders. That's sort of the shape I'm gonna end up with from this brace. So this will be the vertical post and then that's the beam, like the uh, eaves beam running down on the top with the tenon going up into it. I'd altered the spacing on the, uh, the blades. I took half a mil out so that the tenon was a bit looser. Not paying attention, putting it back on. I put the blade the wrong side of the spacer. What's to go on there? Idiot. Really nice with the power feed, like it's nice and safe. I've not got to do any pushing. It's beautiful. Right, there we go, we're off out, a little bit of bailing. It's never nice, it's, um, <clears throat> it's never nice when you've got a problem with the machines and we don't quite know if she's fixed or not, but there's only one way to find out and uh, go and give it a go. Biggest bit of the field. Oh, 
I'm not going to say it's going well because you'll curse it, but uh, seem to be alright. Not got any problems at the minute. Just bailing bales. Buzz is happy anyway. Sure, if my videos the other day, the one where I talked about the little lollipops on top got deleted or not. But um, if you look above the Crone logo on the baler, there's like some lollipop looking bits. Flipped uh, bob up and down, and they basically run on these strings that wrap around the bales and they run on the tension of the string. So when it ties a knot, so when it does that buzz sound and ties a knot. You've got to watch them little lollipops on the top and they sort of indicate how the strip on the string is doing so if they bob up back up nicely if the tie the knot and everything's good if one stays down then um, you've got a problem you've got to stop and have a look at what's going on so it'll be a little while before another knot comes out quite rough down here of course as soon as i start filming it gets rough same field as my brother. So we're uh, double passing it. It's quite nice.
go, field full of bales, all done. There's about 250, I'm not sure what we what we got together, something like that. Just between fields, go, go to a different farm or a different field. Get rid of all this like, chaff that builds up everywhere on every every ledge of the machine. You get loads of chaff and straw just uh, building up because there's a big problem with black grass, um, which is like a grass weed within your crops and it starves the crops. 